enough of that. Let's get started here. Got my starting soon videos. Got a little bit of music underneath that. We're professional now. Got my Wacom tablet working. Okay, good. Everybody, got my chat up. Mm. I do need some reference up though because we'll be working on, I think, I'm always open to doing whatever. We're going to hop in here. Let me go ahead and minimize that. Uh, Bebop. Reference. And blah, 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 blah. We're going to load a little bit of... Actually, I hope I saved the latest version of what we were working on. Yeah, this looks later. That'll work. So, let me go ahead and uh, I'm going to start up. Sorry, my monitors are a little bit off. I had to rearrange my room here. So we're going to go here to add local image. I'm going to go ahead and use Quadro to pop some images up here of a grenade. And I'm going to go ahead and load these textures in uh, so we can kind of match the proportions and whatnot. But this is what we'll be modeling real fast this morning. Let's go ahead and populate these around here. <laughs> Let's see here. All right, uh, we have this. We're up and running. Okay, sorry. Oh, and I'm just a little off my Mickey Mouse here. I guess I can stream like that. That'll be okay. I had to move my camera. Okay, so uh, here's our guy. We don't really need him necessarily because we can just model this at the center of our um, screen here. And actually, this isn't going to work now that I look at this. So we're going to look up. All right, I'm going to get a better image. Hopefully one of just a side view. Oh, perfect. I got this one. Okay, so save image as right here on our desktop. And we're going to go in here to texture import. And I'm going to get a big drink of water. I'm just going to load that right in here. All righty. And then we're gonna go in here, we're gonna take this picture, we're gonna add it to our spotlight right there, that little plus sign it makes it a little bit bigger and we'll go ahead and get started. So first thing I'm gonna do is drop this intensity down, that little opacity guy, we'll drop that down. We don't need to see all the details on this. And we're gonna start with kind of a roundish shape. And I also want to, I wanna make sure we have polarized ends, I believe. So we'll go ahead and start with a sub tool, I'm sorry, a tool, uh, sphere is okay. Go in here to edit mode. We're going to knock this down quite a bit. The defaults are a bit much. We're going to go in here to initialize and we're going to say um, maybe 24 by 24 might work. And we'll go ahead and put this into place. We're going to go ahead and say turn on. Boy, I'm a, I'm a little bit out of practice here. Let's go in here to make polymesh 3D. Uh, go ahead and hit X to go around X symmetry. But in this case, let's go in here to transform activate symmetry in the Y with radial count. Up. So that way, with my radial count, I can go through here and literally just kind of pull this into shape. Although, now that I look at this, let's not do that. Let's be a little bit uh, better about this. So we're going to go in here to our uh, turn on X symmetry again, uh, turn off our radial count, and we'll do this right. We're going to go in here to this gear icon, hit W for a gizmo, gear icon. We're going to go in here to deformer, and we're just going to take, hold down Control Alt, and just unmask this one, and we're just going to just scale. Uh, this top one out and then we'll go ahead and pull oops, pull this in a little bit so we're going to kind of scale it out drop it down just a bit and that'll give us our overall shape give or take now if I want to continue back where I started from this point I'm going to say movie timeline oops, not load movie timeline show and then once that pops up here we can say set a point here, and then in my custom menu here, I can go through here and turn off show. Uh, you can just turn that button back off. So now I can go through here and we can start modeling. So this through here looks like it's a little bit clipped. So hold down control shift, and we're just going to clip this back just a little bit here. And we're just going to smooth this out. Let's go back in here to transform, activate symmetry, radio count here. Shift Z to turn that off. And there we go. There's our squash shape. Now I can use my arrow keys to snap this back into view. And now I'm going to say what part of this needs to actually 
uh, go up. And it looks like, uh, so I, I did uh, control shift and just drag the point over uh, just to show the visibility of this. I'm gonna do control shift S to shrink and then control W to make that a polygroup. Uh, so now, now that I have a polygroup, basically where I want the stem to go, I can go through here and I can say, you know, let's hit W, control tap this polygroup here and then control drag up and then I'll bring out a uh, little stem here. And of course, while you're control dragging, you can snap to the side. So that's a basically where I want this to go, give or take. Uh, let's go back through here. This this transition, it looks like, I mean, that is kind of a hard transition. It goes whoop, sh straight up. However, on the top here, it is much more rounded out. So uh, we went to the top points of here. If we wanted to smash this uh, part down, in fact, one thing we could do is, uh, let's go transform, turn X symmetry back on without radial symmetry back on. Z modeler BZM, hover over an edge, insert single edge loop, hold down alt, there we go. And then hold down control alt, and we're just going to unmask this top part here. I'm gonna do unmash mesh center with X symmetry turned off, and then drop this down just a tiny bit, and then I'm just gonna Z scale this down. You could also use clip, I suppose, uh, but that'll work. So now, this rounded part right here, we're gonna go through here, and we're just gonna say bevel, edge loop complete, put a big fat bevel on there, and then insert multiple edge loops, interactive elevation, and we're just gonna pull oops, right along that edge here and just kinda give that a little fall off here. And I think that'll work. I'm gonna keep this yellow polygroup, but these uh, orange and blue ones I'm gonna merge. So hold down Control Shift Tap right between those polygroups, Control W, and those will all be one polygroup here. Let's make that a little more obvious. There we go. And you know what, we can turn this material down. Ugh, my voice is. <coughs> Just on the verge of coughing here. Let me have a little. Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and finish out Bebop. Ugh, these cough drops are so gross. They're like gushers. They have like a little gooey center. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll, uh, we'll try and learn something today. So usually I'm the one doing most of the learning, <laughs> figuring this stuff out. But there we go. We got something going here. So now let's, yeah, it looks like this one here has a little bit of brass right there at the top or something. Um, we'll ignore that for now. So, okay, I got my reference up and uh, I guess we'll just keep on going. So, we got our basic shape in here, so now let's go ahead and uh, put a, a cube right here. So if I'm going to do a cube, I can literally just append anything. Usually my default would be like, oh, okay, I'm going to append uh, PolyMesh 3D. That's just the star. So if I go through here and just grab the star, that's what I get. However, I can go right down here to initialize cube cube. And that'll put a cube right in the middle of my scene. We'll drag this right up here, and we're good to go. Now, um, one thing to consider is where I want my X forward to be. So let's go ahead and turn on our floor here. And uh, right now, I'm sorry, not X forward, Z forward. So here's our Z forward. Um, and right now, when I have this snap to the side, Z forward is uh, towards me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to keep, I'm actually gonna move Z forward so it's looking to my right, uh, like so. So I'm gonna X symmetry across this axis. So in order to go ahead and fix our movie timeline. I need to go in there. I'm going to turn uh, show back on. So we turn that on um, uh, initially up here under here, show. I'm going to go ahead and drag this dot off and then put a little more, another dot back in there and then we'll go ahead and unshow that. So now uh, Z forward is this way when I snap. So now when I have X symmetry turned on, so if I turn X symmetry back on, I'm symmetrical across this axis, the forward looking point of that. Uh, so there's my cube here. So we're just going to say W. And this is right down the middle here. If I turn on polyframe, you know, so if I have this uh, fold on alt and I move this pivot out somewhere, I can always just go to unmash mesh center or underneath masking. There's a go to unmash mesh center. Uh, as long as X symmetry is off, it'll go ahead and put that right down there. So I'm going to go ahead and push this into place. It looks like from my reference, this thing is about the same width as this thing. So we're in good shape. Uh, however, I am going to need to bring this back end back just a little bit. So hold down Control Alt and snap that back into place. And we're just going to pull this 
right on back. And I think we're in good shape. Now I do want to round these corners off. I'm gonna give this a shot. Let's go in here to insert, single edge loop, hold down Alt. I'm gonna get rid of those extraneous loops here. I'm gonna go down here to geometry, dynamic subdivision, turn on dynamic, and then smooth subdivision, we're gonna turn down to one and then Q grid. We're gonna crank that up and then change that coverage down. So we can kind of get that type of look. Uh, in fact, we're gonna go in here, turn off bevel and turn on chamfer. Just get a nice smooth fall off. Is that what it looks like? Maybe not that extreme. So we're gonna take this Q grid and we're gonna tighten that up just a little bit here. Actually, the coverage will bring down just a little bit. So something like that is what we're going for. Good enough. All righty. <clears throat> so now, sorry, I'm trying to, and it has a little uh, lip out here. So we can go ahead and add that in, it looks like. So right down the middle of here, let's go ahead and turn this on so you can see a little bit better. Let's go ahead and say a bevel as of complete. I'm going to put a bevel right down the middle, and then I'm going to do a quick mirror and weld across the X, put that midline back in there. And then this is a little lip that's going to pop out. So I'm going to say insert single edge loop about here. Actually, I guess I can use my reference, huh? Control Alt, move this down. So this little thing comes out, and then it turns into a little uh, cylinder thing. So how are we going to put a cylinder in there? Uh, in this case, what I'm going to do, so I'm going to go into my custom menu here, Alt-E-M. We're going to drop a cylinder. I have a cylinder pointing to the side here, cylinder mid-12. And with axiometry turned on, we're just going to drop that right down the middle. Go ahead and say split mass points. So now, if I would have gone in here, BI brush insert, and just grabbed an insert mesh primitive uh, and grabbed a cylinder. These cylinders, I don't know how many spans they are, so I didn't want to use those. But I made my own custom IMM brush that has a cylinder with uh, 12 divisions around its axis, I guess, and then uh, looking right at me. So when I drop it down the middle, uh, I'm good to go. And it's even got a midline, but if I go in here and do a mirror and weld, it'll go ahead and have that up there. Um, question. <laughs> I will say hi to Pepper. I think she's going on her poop walk right now with mom. Um, thanks for the stream, say hi. <laughs> um, Cool, uh, can you turn dynamic subdiv off after hitting apply? Or what does that button do to the geometry in the tab? That actually does apply the geometry. So if I hit D, that turns dynamic back on and then shift D turns it off. Uh, if I do hit apply, that's gonna make this real geometry. And in this case, I don't wanna necessarily do that just at this moment. Um, I wanna go ahead and keep this dynamic because if I wanna go ahead and change the topology, I wanna make sure I can hit D, uh, shift D or D to pop back out of there and then continue adding. Uh, stuff to it. I'm gonna go here to, oops, I'll tap this one, hit W, go to, un, uh, I'm gonna reset this, go to unmash mesh center. You can see how we're on the local axis here. Let's go ahead and turn off X symmetry. So we can put it right down there in the middle and then go a snap back. And we're gonna go ahead and drop this right in here. There we go. So now we have this thing and then this thing's gonna have a lip that comes forward and interpenetrates with this cylinder here. And the cylinder is going to be about, and again, I'm, I'm just kind of eyeballing this reference over here. It goes out on the same width here. And on the cylinder here, if I if I turn on D for dynamic, you're gonna see it's gonna inherit the dynamic properties of the previous or the mesh that I dragged it on, which has Q grid on. Don't want Q grid for a cylinder. I'm gonna go ahead and say, let's go down here to crease. And then we're gonna say, and we just did a crease tolerance of 45. So it creased our hard edges over here. And we're gonna say smooth of two, uh, crease level of two, smooth of of three. And that'll kinda, you know, give me a little bit of smoother look. Again, shift D to turn that off and then D to turn that back on. And then if I want to, I can put in a little bit of control loop. So insert single edge loop. We can make that a little bit sharper here and then make sure we don't get any scalloping by putting a control loop right along the edge here. If it'll let me, if it won't, no big deal. I can go in here, I can say inset, flat island, and just pull in a little thing here. So now we have this. Uh, so yeah, looking at this here, let's see. Looks like this needs to be backed off just a little bit. 
these don't actually touch. I'm going to push this back just a little bit here. And then this little middle piece here. So here's one thing we can try. I'm going to go through here. I'm going to say extrude an edge and just pull this out. No. Hmm. Let's try Q mesh an edge. There we go. So I'm going to Q mesh this edge out. That's about what it looks like. And that's just going to pull that straight across, which is exactly what I'm looking for here. And we'll just go ahead and drag these points. So they're just kind of meeting these. So it's that kind of shape. All right, I think we're doing okay. Now, and this is where it's gonna get a little bit maybe tricky, is that if I go ahead and hit D for dynamic, you're gonna see I'm getting a little bit of weird scalloping on these edges. Q grid isn't gonna work great on uh, this little triangular piece here. If I want to, I can go ahead and say, you know what? Let's go down here. We'll run another crease tolerance on here. We're gonna turn off Q grid, and we're just gonna use a smooth subdiv. So we're gonna say smooth subdiv of three. Uh, well, this is you know, crease level of three smooth subdiv of four is my custom menu and then we can go down here and we can say you know what let's go ahead and just say crease this edge here so now we've got and this one up here so that way uh you know let's say smooth subdiv of five there we go a little bit of a smoother look and if i want to go through here and put in my control loops uh, we can but we'll go ahead and just live with that for now Ta -da. and if we want a little bit of a smoother result on this we can go ahead and hit d for dynamic However, if you remember, we got this kind of hard little edge right here. Well, we can just use creasing for that. Uh, in fact, if I want to, I can go ahead and just say uh, crease tolerance again, and that'll put a crease around here, but it picked up this little edge right here. I don't necessarily want that. So I'm gonna take this crease tolerance, crank it up a little bit and drop in a crease, and then it just puts a crease right here. So now I'm gonna hit D, it'll keep that nice and tight. And then I can go through here and say, you know what? Crease level three, smooth set of four, and then I'll kind of back it off just a tiny bit. Something like that. Oh, gotta stay hydrated, sorry. Uh, is there a way to change the pivot for the model before exporting to other apps at UE4 Blender Maya? I end up setting the pivot in Blender as ZBrush pivot is always off. That's a really good question. And I I don't think so. If, if, if this is your pivot, um, can you set this? So there is a, you can explore this. So underneath transform, there is an S pivot in here and that's set your pivot point. And then there's a clear pivot point in here. You can play around with these. In fact, I think Joseph Drust on his Ask ZBrush um, has something on here, like what this function is, but you're right. If I'm doing anything where it's like, I'm going from an object where the pivot has to be in a very specific, like if I'm putting in like a modular set piece and the pivot has to be in a very particular place, I just do that in Maya or blender or whatever you want to use. Uh, I'll click on vertex move pivot only within ZBrush, but that's ignored when it, yeah, exactly. Um, I wish I had a better answer for you for that. I haven't really explored that very much, but it may be something to do with these. I don't know, or, or not, maybe it doesn't do anything on export. Um, uh, in ZModeler brush, is there a way to affect points or Edges, yeah. So when you're in here, so we've got this little box thing here. If you're hovering, if you're in the Z model brush, B, Z, M, and you hover over an edge, these are edge options. So you know we have it set to crease right now. In fact, if I go back to our little guy here, and I say, you know what, let's go ahead. And when I'm in my custom menu, I'm really just using this functionality over here. So you can find it. I'm just gonna go ahead and say uncrease all. And instead of going through here and being like, okay, I'm gonna use my crease tolerance, I'm gonna to hover over an edge with my Z modeler brush this time. And let's do shift D so we can see exactly where that edge is. You can see I'm hovering over this edge, hold down space bar, crease. It's set to edge. So I can go through here and I can click all these edges and crease them or say edge loop complete and then just tap this edge. It'll go ahead and crease that entire edge. And then when I hit D, we're in good shape. That same thing and that's just any component here. So hover over a face, there's your face polygon actions, and then here's your edge actions, and then here's your point actions. In fact, if I hit B, I have some brushes set up. I have some other Z remeshers set up. So here's Z remesher, uh, ZM, Z modeler slice and ZM topology. So if I click ZM topology, this is the a Z modeler, a version of the Z modeler brush. However, it's set up for do nothing on face. It's set up for extrude edge loop, and it's set up for move point. 
So if I want to just do topology in ZBrush, I can use that Z Modeler brush as opposed to the default. Uh, and then I can hop back into my Z Modeler brush if you want to know more about that. Hold on, let me see. View profile. Uh, what one was that? Was that 20? I guess that was 2021. Proper ZBrush, what's new? 2021. Some, oh, 96 damn videos for 2021. That's a big release. Um, you know what? Let's view this. Hold on, just give me one minute. I'm going to view this on YouTube. And we're going to do a... There we go. Z Modeler, Subdiv Capabilities, Extrude, New Options, Z Modeler Topology. Maybe 33, 34, 35 in here. We'll have more information on that. A little bit of new stuff. Let me turn, let me make this a little bit bigger here, sorry. My eyes are getting old. Well, maybe I can't. Um, oh, by the way, here is a bunch of YouTube videos you can even go through here and you could say, you know what, um, for the Z modeler. So we have Z modeler questions, you can go through here. There's a bunch of Z modeler stuff you can check out, for example. And then also, my station page might be a little bit easier to look at. So if you go through here, you can see you know, ZBrush 2020, what's new, ZBrush 2021.5, etc. cetera. Uh, you can hop on here and check that out. Um, has ZBrush Summit been announced for this year? I don't, I haven't heard anything. I keep my eyeballs open. Um, you just model on your grenade and pull a character which you need to retopologize. Uh, or you can use Z Modeler Geo as it is. Um, I think you can use it as it is. We're staying pretty clean, uh, maybe even a little bit too clean. There's actually ways to go about this using Ziri Mesher to get the exact same result. Um, we're just having fun with Z Modeler right now. But uh, yeah, you could you could just be like, let me Dynamesh this thing, and then just use Ziri Mesher or Z Modeler to retopologize if I need to. And I might like if it's a really complex shape like this, I may be more inclined to possibly do that. Nice to see you, Simo. 2021. Um, oh, well, I guess locking it to verts or edges. Uh, if you wanted like snap, hmm. That one's a tougher one. I'm not sure if there is a way. I can't think of a way off the top of my head to like, especially if you want to snap to, you know, if I wanted to snap this vert to this vert here. Um, I don't think so. Uh, what's the best way to prevent muscle deforming when rigging with z-spheres uh, adding more z-sphere helpers uh, would be one way to do it although honestly that can sometimes be more trouble than it's worth so if we go here z-sphere rigging z-sphere topology I got z-sphere rigging in here somewhere there it is uh, posing right here so the little the one with the dog on it We'll have more information on like Z-sphere posing and stuff uh, with helper joints in the rib area and stuff like that. Um, but I just tend not to use Z-sphere rigging, honestly, unless it's like a creature looking thing that just needs really organic bends. Uh, I'll tend not to do that. I'll just go ahead and correct my corrective. I'll sculpt my corrective shapes in ZBrush. Uh, as a company, use your stylus pin buttons for right click and scroll. I don't think we've changed using the buttons hovering in ZBrush viewport. Uh, yeah, actually, if I go in here to my Wacom, Wacom, sorry, properties, and we head in here to my mapping, uh, grip pin, pin, there we go. I have the back one set to middle click and the front one set to right click. Uh, I can use that for right click navigation, so in case you aren't aware. Uh, if I was really zoomed in here, uh, you can of course use your safe. I have a little bit of my screen poking out so I can actually use my safe action to still rotate, but you can also use uh, right click navigation. So you can use, I'm using the bottom button to do right click. And then when, if I was to like hop into Maya, I can use this for my navigation as well. I can use like right click and middle click to pan around. Uh, and ZBrush navigation is a little bit different, but same idea. Uh, yeah, so yes, I do for my pen. Is ZSphere still your preferred method for retopo? Uh, in ZBrush, yes. Uh, I can get it done pretty quick usually. Cool. Uh, all right, so let's see here. Now we got a little bit of a trickier thing. Not really, it's not that tricky, but what we can do is we're gonna go in here to solo mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this little cap on here. We got some little 
weirdo shapes in here. You know what we could do? We can try and use, we can see if Ziri Mesh will do a good job on this. It's probably a little bit more trouble than it's worth, but let's, let's give it a shot. So uh, we have um, this kind of weirdo shape. Oops. We have kind of this little weirdo shape right here. Um, and we could use some of this geometry here, but what we could also do is, let's go ahead and just say append a plane 3D. And then with this plane 3D selected, I'm gonna go ahead and just say rotate this, hold down shift and rotate it 90 degrees so it's looking right at us here. And then I'm just gonna move this into place. I'm not saying this is gonna be the best way to go about this, but again, we'll give it a shot. So going to solo mode here, I'm gonna hit control D a bunch of times so that we're up to about a million. And then I'm gonna go in here, we can turn off polyframe. We're gonna say turn on RGB for a standard brush or people get mad when I do that. Let's do BPA for our paintbrush here. And oops, I'm just gonna go through here. I'm gonna paint this kind of weirdo shape. So now uh, we could use, actually we could use these spheres for this. We can go through here and plot points right along here. If Ziri Mesher doesn't really give us what we're looking for. Uh, but essentially what we're looking for is this weirdo kind of shape. And if I want to use Z spheres for this, I can go through here and I can start masking where I want this to go. Now, this shape right here, you can see where it kind of goes here and then there's a little loop-de-loop. -loop. I can add that in later. I'm just looking for this big weird shape right here. So it kind of goes in and then up and then over. And again, this may not be the best way to go about this, but again, if it if it works, it works. If it doesn't, we'll have a, boy, I don't even know. Remember how to navigate. I'm in, I'm in bad shape, folks. Uh, and then around here, there's gonna be a big hole in here. And again, we can put this hole in later, or we can see if Zero Mesh can handle it um, early. Um, well, here's the thing. So we can, if we wanna put a, a straight line in here, we can hold down, uh, we can hold down control while we're masking, right? Uh, and then we can hold down shift, but shift isn't really gonna work for this. So what I'm gonna hit is W, Y. It's not gonna work for a masking brush, but I can take this transpose line, and pull it right along here and hold down control and then, um, snap that exactly uh, to a straight line. So I'll hold down control, that's gonna move my camera so that this is, uh, the camera's in a straight line. Uh, again, it's not gonna necessarily, let's hit the Q to go back into draw mode. It's not gonna let me hold down shift with masking anymore, but what we can do is we can go through here and then now we can just use mask rectangle to mask this here. And then again, hit W, Y to go into transpose line mode. I'm going to put this transpose line right along here, hold down control, tap that little white icon there, hit Q to go back into draw mode, and then again we can just put in a little rectangular doodad. And then now we're back here in mask pin and we can just finish this out. So that's the basic overall shape we're looking for, and then this is going to swoop right in here, like so. So now if I turn off that poly paint here, you can see there's the shape I have. And then we're going to see if Zero Mesher can do a decent job. In fact, you know what we're going to do? We're going to clean up that circle line. We're going to use a poly, a poly group for that. Looks like I got a little bit of a um, little squiggle on there, but we can get rid of that too. So here's my mask here. We're going to hood. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to hold down Control and Tap to kind of blur that out a little bit, and then Control Alt Tap to sharpen it back up. And then here, let's go ahead and clean this up just a tad. So most of this I think I can I can deal with. So here's my overall shape. Now, uh, if I control tap and then we go through here and we say, eh, I think there is a, we're getting a little bit weird here. Let's see, deformation, you can relax plane, morph plane. I'm going to do a, oh, what am I looking for? It's a, uh, don't really know what I'm looking for here. I guess a size in the, what direction are we in? In the floor here, a size in the X direction. Let's try that. So I'm gonna say X direction here, size of negative 100. And now I kind of Z scale uh, this back in the negative 100. I'm oh, sorry, that was a weird one. Um, so we have this. So now uh, if I hold down control and tap and then hit control W, that's gonna give us a poly group for this area here. However, I'm gonna hold down control shift and we're gonna say auto groups on this one because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this one and this one here. We're gonna go up here and we're gonna say geometry, delete lower, and then geometry modified topology, delete hidden. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and just slice 
uh, circle right in here. In fact, you can see all these little weird alias edges. If we would have gone through here and said uh, geometry edge loop, edge loop mask border, that could have alleviated that, but we're gonna do this. We're gonna go down here to masking. We're going to say uh, mask our open border, mask by features. We're gonna grow that a little bit and then control tap to invert that and then go up here to deformation, polish by features, open circle, and then just tap that a couple times just to smooth those lines out just a little bit. Um, Let's hit Control W, make this all one poly group here. And then let's go ahead and snap this back to our camera view. I'm going to go into solo mode here. And then let's see if I mask here. And then I'm going to say Control Shift. We're going to go in here to slice circle. And let's go ahead and say square center. Gosh, I can't see anything. Let's go ahead and turn off line so I can see a little bit better. There it is. So right here, I'm just going to slice a circle through there. So now, this is an awful lot of work for something I could have just plotted those points out and gotten exactly what I wanted. Uh, but you know what? While we're live streaming, we're experimenting, and we're trying some stuff. So we got this all plotted out here. So I'm going to go ahead and say Control-Shift, Geometry Modified Topology, Delete Hidden. And then we're all going to cross our fingers here. And we're going to say Geometry z Remesher. Let's say adaptive size down. The lower the adaptive size, the more even the geometry is going to be. So I'm going to say down a bit, maybe to 11. And da, 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 da. we don't need to keep groups on. We don't need to smooth groups. We're already smoothish. And then we're just going to say target polygon count of maybe 2,000. Hit zero measure. Again, this is kind of a weird shape. Um, you know what? It didn't do too terribly. Let's go ahead and say half zero mesh. There we go. Oh my goodness. And then along the back here, you can see it has a little bit of stragglers. That's okay. We can say, we're going to hover over a face. We're going to say, delete a single poly with Zoom Model Brush, BZM. And we're just going to get rid of these little, these things are going to wreak havoc on our Z remesher here. And uh, now you can see, uh, here's, here's where we can use snapping a little bit. We can say, Z Model Brush, hover over a Point, and we can say bridge two points, U to U, maybe, nope, not bridge, um, stitch two points, sorry. Just so we can, and if it's ever like, ah, I'm gonna say do nothing on the face action so it's not constantly fighting me here. There we go. Again, because I don't want to zero mesh to build those in. So we got our overall shape here. I think we're okay. Zero mesh or half. Half. There you go. So did it do the world's greatest job in here? No, but you know what? Um, it got us pretty close. And we can actually go through here and start cleaning this up too. So if we want to make this a little bit rounder, we can. And again, you absolutely could have and probably should have if you're watching this later and you're just joining us at this exact minute, um, you probably should go through uh, on that plane that we made and just go ahead and plot those points in. And then you could put a little circle in there and you know it would save you a little bit of heartache on having zero measure have to do the heavy lifting for you. But we're already past that point, so create a collapse edge. I'm just gonna go through here and I'm just gonna go through and just collapse these edges down. So now that I've done this, I've started collapsing them. I can go back in here and say, again, collapse poly loop and just bloop. Get rid of all these here. There we go. And then we'll just say collapse edge. Clean this up. And since we're snapped to the side, I can literally just use my move brush. Uh, you can also use your Z Muller brush with move turned on and uh, you know, clean this up however you'd like. So we've got our kind of weirdo shape in here. If I do shift Z and put this back in, um, that's our overall shape. And then I can just kind of extrude this out once we add some uh, thickness on here. Uh, I'm not still in love with this. What we're going to do is say collapse edge, and then we're going to say collapse poly loop here. See if that'll work for us. Yeah, that'll work. Uh, again, if you want to resolve some of this, we can go through here and say control shift, and we can say slice. Let's put a slice right through here, hit control W, and then we can go through here and we can say okay, collapse edge here, and then delete edge here. We'll call that good enough for now. That's about right. Uh, so now what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to go ahead and uh, give this thing some thickness. So you're going to see when I'm looking at it from the front, it's perfectly flat. So I'm going to say, let's go ahead and just do an extrude polygroup ball. And we'll just pull this over to the other side and then display properties flip. That's way down here at the bottom. Display properties flip. And then, um, oh, goodness. Let's go ahead and just say, go to unmesh mesh center here. I'm going to scoot this over. So we're somewhat down the middle here, and it's a geometry modified topology mirror and weld across the x-axis, and that'll put us right down the middle. And then now I can go through here, and we're going to scale this out just a bit. So we're going to say U, kind of go past that point just a tad. There we go. And we'll go ahead and put on D for dynamic on that one. And you know what? It looks like... You know, again, we got that really thin piece of metal that goes across here, but also this needs to be a little bit flatter. So we're gonna go ahead and say Control Alt. I'm gonna grab all of these top verts here. Go ahead and set our pivot, hold down Alt and just set them. And then just Z scale, or in this case, Y scale these up. And then these endpoints here, I'm gonna go ahead and say set this here. And then scale these in. There we go. So now, and pull this point forward a little bit uh, and then it gets really thin up here so we're going to say insert single edge loop just pop in an edge loop right along the top here and then these two polygons here we're going to go ahead and turn on x symmetry hold down alt tap here uh, w control tap that poly group and we're going to say sorry um, let's do this let's do transpose a single poly and go ahead and it'll unmask these here we're going to say reset so i can hold down control and just pull these here i'm going to see scale these back so we can pull these straight out so now again let me go ahead and so i can see this so we're basically pulling out this geometry here now it's going to have to make a little whoop, little bend here so what i need to do is i'm going to go through here the modeler brush we're going to say uh, i guess q mesh will work fine Q mesh, single poly here, hold down control and just pull off a little piece here. And then control alt, and then just move this down. So it's gonna go around this bend here to here, and then it's gonna loop all the way over to here. Let's go ahead and go to unmask mesh center and we'll just rotate this around. So now I should be able, fingers crossed, should be able to bridge um, here to here so we're going to say delete a single poly here to here and then we'll just say bridge two holes u to u and then delete delete bridge and bridge uh, not great however now that I see you know, where this thing needs to end up, I can actually go through here and say, you know, let's delete that. Let's go out of solo mode. I'm going to borrow geometry from this thing. So we're going to say duplicate our, let's do shift D, uh, duplicate our little cylinder off here. Essentially, we're going to copy this geometry and then borrow some of this geo. And it ends a little bit prematurely. So it's not going to go all the way here. So let's go into solo mode here. Basically, it's going to be this one, this one, this one, and this one to this one. So we're going to isolate just this, a delete hidden. And then we can say, you know what, let's say Q mesh, uh, polygroup all. So pull this down, give it some thickness here. So now we've got this piece here into this piece here. If we need to make this a little bit thicker, just hold down shift as you're using Q mesh. That'll thicken it up a little bit. So now. We've got this little loop here, and we've got this loop here. So I'm hold down Shift, bent arrow down, Alt tap this one, Shift, bent arrow down, isolate just both of these here, and then I just need to sew these two up. Um, and yes, actually, I'm gonna hold down Control Alt W, and we're gonna scoot this over. We got X symmetry turned on. No, we don't, but I can do a quick mirror and weld across the X. There we go. And then 
this will do that because I'm just going Okay, so uh, again, I want this one to kind of continue right in here. I could use a bridge function if I merge these down. However, this is going to have to meet up with this. We're going to say insert single edge loop here. Sorry, this is kind of a, a dry Z modeler run through. Um, but oh well. Uh, and I'm going to take this here. Hold on, Control Alt. I'm just going to kind of rotate this to kind of get us a little bit closer here. Okay. So now I'm going to merge both these down. I'm going to merge this one onto this one. So we're going to go in here to merge down here. So now these are all part of the same uh, poly group here. And I'm going to hold down Control Shift with a rectangle. And we're just going to grab that one polygon right there in the middle and then say, Hold on, let's go into display properties, double. Oh, okay. That doesn't have a cap on it, that's okay. So actually, let's do this. Hold on, Control Shift, Control Shift A, and I'm just gonna say, delete a single poly there. Good enough. And then I'm gonna go through here, we're gonna say stitch, again, stitch two points, U to U, and then those I can just weld, I think. U to you. And then we're going to close this one up. Let's go ahead and turn off our floor here. Uh, bridge edges U to you. And then since these points are so close, I'm just going to go into my weld options here. Weld points, crank up my weld distance a bit, and then just make sure all these are welded here. So if I hold down shift and smooth, you'll see all these points are welded. Uh, we have to do some have some extraneous geo along here. So when we use Ziri Mesher, it wants to make everything nice, even quads. Uh, you don't necessarily need that. So you can go through here. You can say like insert single edge loop, hold down Alt, and go through here, and you can just get rid of again any of this extraneous geometry. Uh, you wouldn't have extraneous geometry necessarily if you would have gone through here manually and then just plotted out your points. So you have a little bit more control. But again, you're just trying some trying some stuff here. Uh, and again, along this uh, flat cat, I guess you need those to kind of maintain that shape. Um, another thing to consider is if you're ever gonna see any of this. So we've gone through and we've done all this modeling and I don't think we're actually gonna end up seeing it on our final um, object. You know, it's gonna be a little thing on his jacket, you know, but. Sorry, let me get cut up here. Um, Uh, but by the second part of the creature design, which is only about the game pipeline, we'll be able to follow along with my personal sculpt. Yeah, you should be able to. Um, so that's this one. If I remember correctly, uh, it does start with like, hey, as long as you know the basics of ZBrush and you know how to like hop into ZBrush and uh, export things. I mean, I walk you through all that stuff anyway. So yeah, absolutely. This one, this, this creature production here, um, part two, game res process. Um, also, another one that has game res process is the Mechanical Skull series. Um, kind of the same deal. I want to say, might be a little bit cheaper too. Let me see. Here's the video breakdown of this. So for the game res. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so here's all the game res files or the game res process that are in the Mechanical Skull series. So anyway, if anybody's interested in those, you can check them out. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, I brought it up. <laughs> Mechanical Grill School is really informative. Great job. Excellent. Thank you. I need to, I, I need to do more production-y stuff. I just don't usually end up having a ton of time. Uh, there's a lot of content I want to do. Um, any experience with easy, easy remesh? It's not plugging in the price more predictable zero mesh results. Uh, no, usually I can just dial in, you know, I kind of get what I need, uh, just using zero mesher options. Um, but yeah, check that out if that's helpful. I'm doing good, Brahim. Thanks for asking. Uh, tutorial, yeah, sure, of course. Uh, Nomad Sculpt on iPad. Uh, what do you think about it? You know what? I haven't. However, I got Nomad. Um, one of our, let's see, Art Station Live YouTube. Let me just do a quick search on his. So, Matt. Keen uh, has, you know, he, he goes through a lot of stuff. Thoughts on Nomad sculpting, Nomad sculpt models on your phone. 
uh, Nomad speed scopes and stuff like this. I'm going to drop you his YouTube channel here. He's got some good stuff on that. It looks exciting. I just, again, most of my time isn't, is, is uh, lately most of my time is spent in Miro. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, sweet cartoon mech character. Is he part of the course you plan on releasing? Yeah. Eventually. God, I'm so dumb. Um, yeah, I do have a whole, you know what I need to do is I need to finish that series out. It just kind of, it kind of stops prematurely. Um, yeah, it's a, you know, it's basically this guy. He's not, but he's not great. I think the reason why I haven't released it is he just, he's more of an exercise in like just getting these kind of basic things in here, but I'm not, I'm not in love with them. I want to do like, uh, I can't, it's weird. On this series, I went through like rated G, rated PG, rated PG-13, and I want to do a rated R version. And by rated, I don't mean necessarily like uh, sexual content or anything. I literally just mean like doing uh, something where I would go in and do something a little bit more like my, um, I guess I have my station made here. And doing it a little bit more in this style where I go through and I just like, hey, let's do the tubing back, but let's go nuts with his, um, I guess I can use this one here. There we go. Let's go nuts with his shapes, you know, and make them a little bit more ZBrushy, hard surfacey, as opposed to just kind of like doop doop doop, the kind of DreamWorksy. So, um, uh, yeah, give me some time. Let me let me finish that series up. It, well, here's the other thing too: is that series is so old. I recorded it years ago, so I'm not even sure if the techniques are that relevant anymore. Did you come from a poly modeling background in external software? If so do you feel Z modeler tools need more separation for context sensitive things to be faster in iteration? Um, I don't do, um, I'm not a great poly modeler by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, usually what I'm doing, especially if I'm just feeling out an idea, is like this is a great example. Um, you know what, I can pop this open real quick here. So let's say load ZBrush demo. Oops, um, nope, sorry. Something wrong. Sample files. Bird robot. Oh, you know what? Before I do this, quick save. So, there we go. So, for example, um, we can kind of step through this. So, this again, if I'm going to be doing, doing just some crazy, weirdo, hard surface, organic y mixed bag type of thing, I'm gonna just going to block it on ZBrush. This would be like, you know, a couple hour kind of messing around and then we're going through and refining it probably another couple hours you know just kind of getting my idea in the round um, before I start deciding like okay do I want to go through and uh, rebuild uh, the stuff now on the rebuilding process uh, it's kind of it kind of depends on your comfort level I, for me and ZBrush um, like you said are the, are the poly modeling tools the best um, it kind of depends on what operations you're running I find I tend to find them okay um, there's some cool tools and some boolean options and some non-destructive workflows you can do uh, in other software but at the end of the day if i'm just needed if i just need polygons i'm probably going to stay 90 percent in zbrush if i need to do like a little weirdo technique or something i can hop out real quick uh, but generally speaking like this is still in fact all the way to the end so here's the refined forms and then here's the concept final um, this is all and this is don't get me wrong this is noisy it's, it doesn't have great breakup this is more I would be, this is for thick skin if you guys remember if y'all, uh, okay, do I not have access to, there we go. If you remember, let's maximize our screen size here. Um, if you remember on this one here, so this was part of the Zebras 2021.5, I think. Uh, yeah, Zebras 2021.5, what's new? If you go through here, you're gonna see a thick skin option in here so this is kind of messing around with just some hard surface stuff and some thick skin uh, options for hard surface sculpting basically not necessarily uh, modeling so this is an exercise for that however all my ideas are pretty well plotted i figured out some of the functionality in here you can see it's still a little bit goopy up in here in the cockpit so i would still want to go in and figure that out uh, but what i could do is i could go through and i could you know pop any of these little pieces off here and say, you know, it's split hidden. And then I could go through and say, I would probably knock this down to its basic shapes and then just rebuild it. 
either plot points or zero mesh, or it kind of depends if I want to go brute force, I'll just zero mesh it and then go through here with my sculpting tools and make it hard surface. Or if I want to go more of a sub D modeling path, um, I would knock it down to its basic forms, get the sub D, get this thing basically plotted out. You can use any software for that. I'd, I'd probably stick in ZBrush. There's no reason for me to hop out of ZBrush for something that fast. And then go through here. And then if I'm, I am going to do some serious box modeling where it's like, okay, I'm actually not going to do something like this. Let me see. Sorry, tiny mesh here. Go through here, grab my clay brush. And again, I'm just going to, I just want the basics. This is more like, eh, let me throw some concept the alphas in here, but I don't really need those. These I can box model in later as needed. Uh, but all I really need are these basic forms here. So go through here and just be like, you know what? Let me simplify this just a tad. Shift, smooth intensity up. H polish here. Here we go. H polish here polish here so this is my basic shape and I could rebuild this in fact even this eh, you know what I probably would build this in because this gets a little bit weird this shape gets a little bit complex here um, but at least I know in the round what my idea is in fact all this back end stuff I could probably just you know rebuild the front and then go through here and just bear it because this is obviously odd you know you wouldn't want this here you, you could fix this you can go into move brush turn on back face masking and then just kind of pull this out just a little bit and then go through and you know, clip or dynamesh or whatever you want to do to clean this up. H polish this all together, but um, yeah, I'll leave that up to you if you wanted to resolve that in the sculpt or just resolve it in the box modeling portion of what you want to do. You know, so you go through here with your Damien standard and be like, you know what, this ridge should maybe meet up with here. So we'll go in here with our damn standard clay brush here, our move brush with back face masking on. And then go in here with your H polish brush and just hold down Alt, let go of Alt, and just polish these back up. Now, is that great hard surface modeling? No, but again, it gets my idea in the round. I figured out what I want the shape to be, and now I can decide, you know what, let's rebuild this thing as a sub D mesh. Make it super nice, and then uh, add it back in with the rest of my mesh, which I guess would be this one, right? So then I could get IMAX with it. I could be like, let's zoom in on this and render it out. Um, but again, pick and choose your battles. Let's go delete all of that one here. Still good on this. Click save. Um, I'm back. <laughs> uh, thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll get back. ZGMG92. I'll, I'll, I'll try and get that series rocking and rolling. Cool. Um, custom image. My, yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you want to speed things up a little bit, uh, I'm, I'm, I live in here, basically. In fact, if you want more information on that, uh, custom. Oops. Uh, good old YouTube. Let's type in custom in here, and there's custom interface and menus. There's a bunch of custom interface and menus. If you are new to ZBrush in this playlist here, uh, there is an intro to ZBrush, new and updated, and that's got customizing menus and stuff here. So you know what? I'll just drop this in here. People might enjoy that um, the semi updated thing in there uh, block using Z modeler has a lot of fun to usually block complex boolean forms and maximize and important yeah you can and again however you want to do it is totally fine uh, what I'm gonna do is you know let's get back here so I got skin shader here uh, I'm gonna snap this to my thing here and I'm saying you know what I'm a little bit thin along here one thing I do love about ZBrush uh, is this uh, group by normals option here. So I'm gonna say, let's drop that group by normals down. So I've got green and pink essentially, it's hit control W. So this whole poly group here, I wanna thicken this up. Q mesh, uh, poly group all, hold down shift, and just kind of uh, pull along that surface normal there and just kind of thicken that up. So that way, uh, and again, poly groups, I live and die by poly groups here, especially when I'm Z modeling. Now, if I wanna simplify this, just tr crank that max angle back up and there we go. You know, let's put that back to 45 group by normals. There we go. So now we've got all our all of my selections um, back. And you know what? In fact, I am gonna I'm gonna thicken this up actually too. All the blue here. I'm gonna hold down again Q mesh and then hold down shift to pull along that surface normal. And that'll give us what we're looking for here. So go out of solo mode, hold down shift, turn on all our eyeballs again, and uh, we're doing okay. Uh, we're doing A-OK. -okay. Now this one has a little, you know what? So these ones go down straight. I don't know anything about these really. I've never used this there, but this one's kind of bent in. 
um, which I guess doesn't really matter. Uh, it does kind of get just a little bit thinner, but we've already kind of built in the thinness, so you know what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna go down here. You're gonna see this line here gets a little bit crimped in here. I'm gonna hold on Control Alt, and then say, I'm just gonna move my pivot right in here, and that's gonna, you know, get Z scale or Y scale. Uh, that back flat and then here i'm just going to hold down alt and paint these and then q mesh this out and then again we'll just say go down mesh mesh center and pull that down oops i guess it'd be about that much in here and then from the side view here let's go out of x symmetry and then pop that back in and we'll go ahead and just pull this in here. Okay, something like that. I'm looking around. Um, oh, you know what? This is hmm. this does get a little bit tricky in here because what we need to do now is this all works. However, inside of here, this actually needs to be nice and thin. So we could. I'm going to simplify this idea real quick. I mean, I don't know why we're spending so much time on this. this you're lit. Okay. Right now is where you would probably stop messing around with this and be like, you know what, good enough. You're going to be seeing another guy's shirt like from here. Not a huge deal. If you want to go further, let's do it. So uh, we're going to take this here. We're going to go into solo mode. And I'm going to say, you know what, this is all working fine. So I don't want to worry about this. I'm just going to say you are split hidden. And then alt tap you is what I, I really need to figure this out. So again, what I can do is I can hold down. Uh, I'm going to do a quick group by normals just to get my polygroups back. And I need I need the pink, and I need the blue, and I need the green here. These are all the ones I do need. And then we're going to say delete hidden. Um, we do have double turned on in our display properties. Again, display properties is way down here. And then now if we need thickness on here, we could go through here and we could say extrude all polygons and just pull this in. So that'll go ahead and give us um, you know, again, that thickness we were looking for. Uh, however, you are going to see it's going to kind of crimp these corners a little bit. We can collapse those down. It's not a huge deal. Um, and then now that we do have this, we can hold down shift and just, oops, extrude uh, polygroup all. So these are all one polygroup now on the inside. Hold down shift. You could also use panel loops for this if you wanted to. Um, I guess you could. We can go through here. Let's get the other shot. You know, quick save. And then up here underneath your, you could also use extrude. Uh, extract for this as well but uh, geometry edge loop there is a panel loops in here so we're gonna say uh, you know elevation we're gonna keep it negative 100 we don't want this to go out any we want it to um, go in so we're gonna say negative 100 uh, polish close circle zero loops we're just gonna say one uh, double turned on and then if we do panel loops here you're gonna see it's gonna kind of pop in a little bit here, but it's gonna be a little bit harder to control on the corners here. It kind of doesn't, Oh, you know what? Um, I'm gonna say ignore groups. There we go. So that way it'll kind of pop in a little bit of thickness here. And actually, you know what? That's not terrible. That's not terrible. Let's make sure we're making this thick enough. Yeah, that'll work. And you know what? Panel loops, it works fine. So now I'm going to say X symmetry here. I'm going to do a quick geometry modified topology mirror and weld. You can see how it kind of, it's just a little off axis. So in fact, let's do a mirror across the X and then mirror and weld across the X. There we go. And then we're going to say collapse edge here to the corner on the inside here and all the way down. I'm going to say collapse these edges in here. Again, this is a bit nasty. Um, not my favorite. And then for these corners here, I'm gonna go in here with my move brush and just kind of eyeball it. Again, not great, but good enough. Again, you're not gonna feel, you're not seeing in here. So who cares? So you got this. Now, one thing I am seeing is this hole seems to have gotten a little bit big. So we're gonna go ahead and close this down a little bit. Uh, control, mask, circle. I'm gonna go ahead and say mask, these verts here, control tab to invert that. Let's go to unmesh mesh center. We do have X symmetry turned on. However, we don't have L sim turned on. So if I go through here and start scaling, you're gonna see it's gonna go towards and away from the center axis. So turn on L sim. And then also, as I'm scaling, I'm gonna hold down Alt and just scale along this axis here to kind of close this up. 
because if you go through here and you start scaling it's going to start like doing some weird stuff with your verts you just want to scale on those x y axis here so again if we want to scale this in a little bit we can hold down alt and do this one and that'll scale that down just a tiny bit here we go and then uh, because we have our polygroups in here uh, we could go through here we say you know crease pg and then we can turn on dynamic and that'll give us a crease level two smooth level three it's in it's inherited our previous settings here that's kind of the result we're getting good enough um this circle isn't too circular is it you can hold down control alt oh here's one thing you can do um z modeler brush hover over a point and instead of stitching we're going to say move infinite depth so that way as you're moving an x and also you know what let's say do nothing for our edges and do nothing for our faces so now you can literally just go through here and uh, move points you do have an infinite depth move uh, you can actually use for your move brush but it's built in to your z modeler brush again if you wanted to put in a control loop along here that might be worthwhile um, especially for circular objects but since it's cut into a flat plane i guess i can live with it Oof. Uh, for the move brush here if we get move and we go in here to transform i think it's transform is that here um split screen where is that my brain just shut down i would assume it's under transform let's do this Me to the rescue, Z, uh, Z versus 2020 infinite depth. Okay, since we're looking right at it, if we turn on our floor, we see Z is forward. Oh, it's under depth menu, duh. Okay, so, um, nope, not under transform. So it's under brush options, depth. You're gonna see infinite depth is uh, automatically set to Z. We're gonna set this to X, because if you remember, if we turn our floor back on, here's the X axis, Z is forward. So now with infinite de depth, set to X with our move brush. Now we can use infinite depth with our move brush. So instead of having to resort to our uh, Z modeler brush. So anyway, sorry, this is turning into a much longer uh, thing than I was expecting. Let's go ahead and do this thing real quick. I'm gonna say, you know what, you, uh, you know, let's take this back to mask pin here, control alt, and I'm just gonna go to unmash groups. So now uh, we do have a little little bobby pin looking thing that's going to go all the way through. I forget the name of it. Uh, I'm trying to get a view of the other side. It's not a huge deal if I don't have one. We can just, uh, I think we just model it real quick. So um, let's keep this simple. So I'm going to do, oh, you know what? We need to sew this back up. So we figured out this thickness, right? Hold down shift, shoot it to the bottom, alt tap this one, shoot it to the bottom. Let's do shift D. And let's say, you know what, now that I've figured out this weirdo thing, I just want to sew these back up. So right through here, again, move here. So this is all open and this is all open. Um, let's see how we can figure this out. It's going to hold down Alt and then switch this back to like, I don't know, Q mesh, I suppose. And we're just going to drag across here. We're going to say delete single poly here and then we're going to merge these two uh, shapes back up I do need another edge ring in here so these will match up so here so we're gonna say insert single edge loop and we're just gonna put one right in here and then I can just go ahead and stitch these together uh, to make this a little bit faster I can try just using weld so this one here control alt W we can say you know let's straighten this out here and we'll have this one let's go ahead and merge these back together so again merge down it's under your subtool merge options. I'm going to get these close. Control Shift, Control Shift A, mask this one here. Bring everything back, invert that mask, and pop this in here. So now, if I'm close enough, sometimes I can go through here with weld points and just use like weld distance set to 18, and it goes ahead and welds these points up. There. Oh, but this uh, isn't gonna. This isn't working. You know, this, this line will match up here, but nothing matches up here. So what I could do is I could just say, you know what, let's just collapse that edge and see if that smooths correctly. Uh, if it doesn't, I can just go through and say, you know what, okay, fine. Insert single edge loop here. And um, 
let's undo back before these are all there we go insert edge loop here so now again now I'm just working in circles here collapse edge here weld points good enough and you know what oh you know what Let's say those didn't weld when we did, I forgot when I to check on these so we're gonna say collapse edge here and collapse edge we don't collapse this edge let's go ahead and just move this edge back infinite depth off sorry got a little sloppy with our I got so excited about panel loops working um, I forgot to check all my my little corners here so we're gonna say you know what you are collapsed down Alt, Shift, go ahead and copy these polygroups over. Eh, you know what, that'll be fine. Okay, fine, whatever. Goodness gracious, I spend so much time on something this trivial. So, hold on, Shift, turn everything back on. And then again, we're gonna have that, that pin that goes through. So really quickly, I think I'm just gonna use a uh, box for this. So Alt, E, M, cube, mid, just pop in a little box right here, split mass points, W, scale this down and we're going to do one half of it first so we're going to scale this down here and then scale it out it's going to kind of poke through here and then again unmesh mesh center and we'll just put this right through here and then w control drag this out and then these two are going to get bridged together they're gonna kind of go out and then bubble back around. So here's what we're gonna do. Insert single edge loop, hold down Alt, and get rid of those extraneous points here. And again, one more time, we're just gonna say Q mesh, single poly, I'm gonna hold down Control, and then I'm gonna make this here. So again, we're gonna force unmesh mesh center here. We're going to kind of force this shape and then we're going to bridge it. So this is going to be, again, it's going to kind of go out a little bit here. So we're going to bridge this and then control drag out here. And then again, just bridge uh, back. I didn't have to, I guess I could have done this on a, on its own axis or something like that and just copied it back in. That'd probably be better if you're gonna use these a lot of different places, um, but good enough for now. So delete, single poly here, here, here. And again, we're just gonna again, bridge all these together and then finally bridge these, uh, that little loop back there. Bridge, two holes, U to U, U to U. this one to this one and dial that in um, and that's fine so now X symmetry turned off and then on this side here I don't need any of that nonsense delete hidden I'm just gonna do a real quick close holes and then delete edge here let's in fact yeah X symmetry is turned off so now we can go through here we can say Q mesh uh, polygroup all just kind of hold down shift and pull this out. And on that other side, I'm assuming can't really see, uh, but these things might, you know, kind of bend out so it can kind of stick in that hole a little bit better. So what we can do is again, hold down shift, pull it out like this. And then again, hold down control, pop these out. Control alt W. And again, we're just gonna tell it, scooch over this way. Unmesh mesh center, over here. And 
and you can bridge two polygons together, but you're not gonna have uh, that nice arc control. So again, we're gonna say bridge two holes and we should probably turn off double underneath your display properties. Just, just being careful about that. And then just tap, there we go. And then you know what, let's alt tap this one and this one scissors back to Q mesh, poly group ball, and we'll just pull out a little bit. I don't know, something like that. Uh, so now since this is just a simple cube around here, I'm gonna go ahead and hit D for dynamic and that'll just kind of smooth it into a, a basically a 2B type shape here. And then through this is going to be um, a helix. So let's quick save. Out of edit mode, control N. We're gonna do a quick helix 3D. We're gonna mess around with some settings here. The first one underneath initialize uh, and by helix, I mean, it's just, oops, hold on. Do I have a, sorry, that's really annoying. I can't pull this in. Ooh, why is it doing that? Fine, close window. One second here. I think, I, I think I had a window open. There we go. Sure. Add local image. Streaming. Total power. Reference. Second. There we go. Now, that's what I'm making right here. Um, radius, pull that off. Uh, let's go ahead and crank these all the way up. We don't need this many spans. We just need like this many, 2.3, let's say. Uh, let's see, profile, thickness, radius offset. So let's take the Z offset and just kind of mash these together. Uh, coverage, again, is like one. I guess those do meet up a little bit. So I'm gonna play around with this coverage. If you, yeah, if you tap here, you're gonna see a little bit of an orange button at the top. You get a little bit finer tuned things here. So these are just gonna barely not overlap. It's gonna be really a little bit of room in between these two. Um, and then let's go in here. So I don't, I don't come in here that often. Let's turn on our polyframe here. S divides. Yeah, you know what? Let's simplify this quite a bit. Let's say S divides of maybe five. Looks right. And then L divides. And again, I'm just gonna make this as simple as possible. So knock those down just a bit. Um, Z offset, let's try thickness. Let's see what thickness is up to. Yeah, let's thin these down just a bit. And then again, that Z offset, we're gonna push those together. There we go. That's about right, right? Good enough for government work. So we're gonna say, make polymesh 3D. And then now, if you wanted to, we can go through here again, uh, crease tolerance on this. So when we hit dynamic, crease a level of two, smooth set of three or something. Um, that'll give us more of that kind of uh, profile. So I'm just gonna use this as an insert mesh brush. So I'm gonna say B, Create insert mesh new, quick save, and then go back here to our grenade. And just, um, you know what, we'll just pull it on that shape there. And then we'll say split mass points, D for dynamic. And um, you know, we need to rotate this around. Unmesh mesh center, scooch. We can go through here and we can goodness unmesh mesh center there we go kind of play around with that just a little bit here d for dynamic and then this one again should just be able to kind of sit in here comfortably something like that 
Okay. Um, uh, my headphones are hurting. Oh, you know what? This we are looking at the other side. There's the big ring there. Um, so actually, these things actually go up quite a bit. Let's do Shift D and hold down Control. Ah, you know what? Let's use this Q mesh. I'm going to mark these so that they're on their own poly group here, and let's hold down Shift. So those go out quite a bit here, and uh, maybe not that much. Oh no. So when I do that and I Q mesh this out, I'm going to tap Alt to give it a brand new polygroup here. So that when I go back in here and say, you know what, Q mesh polygroup all, it's not grabbing a weird polygroup up here either. Okay. And then uh, as far as how big this ring needs to get. It doesn't look nearly big enough. It actually is almost touching. So I'm going to say, you know what? What I don't want to move is this pivot up here. And then just from this pivot, we'll scale this down until it uh, touches. Okay. Something like that. And if you did want to inflate this a little bit, since they're all one polygroup here, uh, you can go through here and say Q mesh polygroup all, hold down shift, and just pull along that surface normal. Or you could literally go into your deformations uh, and inflate. Deformations are down. Oh boy. Down here, so there it is, deformation. And I'm super behind, sorry about that. If I skip anything, I apologize, just keep shouting it out. How are we doing on time? Okay, not too bad. Cool, um, you do my first, yeah, I, I agree, Morpheus. It's, uh, yeah, they did a little bit more functionality for pivots and stuff, um, would help, I think. Um, you do use reprojection from history and tandem with Ziri mesh uh, for hard surface. Um, I guess you, no, not, well, I mean, I guess you could. I guess you could if you had a really precise sculpt and you're just moving polygons, uh, sub simplified polygons into place. And yeah, absolutely. Why not? Cool. And again, if I missed something, I apologize. Um, first, sculpt style is female reference doesn't have all the angles to see the curves, of the cheekbones, etc. I'm following some tutorials I don't know if it's the right call um, you know you can you do have some really good reference if you hit the comma key underneath tool uh, grab um, oh wait, it's not another tool it's under project you do have a um, female and a male Z project load these up um, and pull those into your project and in fact if you if it's like ah you know what if I know if I load up a Z project it's gonna blow away everything I'm working on I can literally bring her in for reference just do load tools from project Go to ZBrush 2020 Z b b b b b LMNO projects. ZBrush 2020. So C program files, pixel electric, ZBrush 2020 and Z projects. Um, and then there's going to be a female Z project. So if you double click this one, uh, that'll just bring in the tool from that Z project. So you can use her as reference for. You know, you can. All, I mean, you can get scan data and stuff, but this will be decent for like you know the draft of the lips and you know there's not a ton of detail on here uh, but it's all generally where you would want your points here so this might be uh, a good option for you uh, but of course yeah you can bring in uh, scan data stuff like that and same thing for the mail that's in there um, I do have I want to say you know what I, I'll, I'll do you one better let me see Google Drive give me one second please base bodies base Um, can find base mail. Okay, here we go. Uh, female base. Is there one that Z tool? Ooh, I don't know if this is the one I want. Let's see. Before I send this out. Okay, good. So uh, I have a, I have this female for you if you'd like. You don't want YouTube to yell at me, so I'm like, I'll leave her up on screen super long. Uh, but here's the female base. I'll share, get link, copy link. Okay, done. And there you go. You can download her as a reference if you want to. Um, full 
cool, 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 cool. Um, Geek Relief, CDF files. Um, CFG, excuse me. Uh, snapping functionality of Zmod RV, where it's going to trigger my OCD if I can't align normals in parallel properly. Yeah, uh, if you if you need to do like a modular set piece or you need to be very precise with modeling, then um, yeah, ZBrush is definitely going to trigger you all over the place. Good luck with that. Uh, let, learn learning to let go <laughs> is what I've done. Uh, if you need to do something, su if you need to do something super precise, um, generally what I'll do is I'll hop into um, actually maybe in here too. Uh, Fusion 360, I'll hop in here. Like if I need to get down to like the millimeter uh, precision, I mean, granted, you know, you want polygons, there's ways to go from uh, Fusion to like Moi 3D and then into ZBrush uh, or, you know, N-Gons, you can go through whatever modeling program and do your hard surface stuff to your heart's content. Uh, but yeah, if I'm doing super duper stuff, I'll hop in there. Um, cool, thank you. Lemelad, use physics to make the pin and spring hang more naturally. Um, yeah, maybe. Um, this here, probably not, because what it's going to do is it's going to simulate this all as cloth. What you could do is you could assign it to a plane and then have that plane kind of dictate. You could use a micro mesh or a um, nano mesh if you wanted to, to just have a plane that would be simulated. So it would keep it all one spring um, and then have it, yeah, have it kind of just bloop, bloop, kind of dangle around. Um, yeah, you could do that. Yeah, and yeah, for the rigid body, um, <laughs> it's fake, uh, but it's exactly what I'm talking about, let me see. Uh, yeah, fake rigid body simulation. So essentially you can go through here and I can just, it's basically using micro poly. So you can go through and you can just say, uh, these are all just poly planes falling around. Um, so let me see if I switch it up here. Oops. There you go. Yeah, so if you wanna kind of do again a fake rigid body simulation, again, it's just planes being simulated that are driving these objects, but you can give this a shot if you. That's something cool for you. Cool. Um, uh, how to thicken the edges. Oh yeah, so this was basically a deformation inflate. So all the way down here, there's a deformation. Oops. And there's an inflate here. Oh, dang it. I just did a, luckily, I, I hit a deformer accidentally and it got into a bad state, but I did do a quick save, so I think we're safe. I'll just open up that last quick save real quick. Basically, deformation, inflate, or using Z Modeler, quick save. There we go. So one more time, we got our insert mesh here, B, create insert mesh new. You could append this as a different subtool if you wanted to. Uh, but we're just going to go ahead and plot that right in here. Say split mass points, W, move this down, Alt tap this one, go to unmesh mesh center, rotate it around, Alt tap this one, and we'll go ahead and set this up to this pivot point and scale it down. So it's the appropriate size here. And then again, uh, deformation inflate that we just talked about, or Q mesh um, polygroup all. And then hold down shift as your Q meshing, and that'll pull along the surface normals as well. Uh, that, and then of course here, we need to redo this. So one more time, uh, alt tap these, and we still have uh, Q mesh turned on for phases, Q mesh polygroup also. As I'm pulling this out, I'm gonna tap alt to give it a new polygroup here so that that's working. Okay, and then here we'll go ahead and hit D for dynamic. And let me make this here. Yeah, good enough. Uh, so now Shift D. So if you want to go through and manually, you can play around with your crease tolerances or just literally go in here and just manually crease what you need to increase. Uh, so this is going to be nice and flowy. Um, this, let's go in here again to our depth, turn on our infinite depth in X. I'm just going to kind of squish these down just a little bit here. Here, 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 here. And then again, let's 
go through here and I'm going to say crease and then w. Oops, let's go and turn off infinite depth. I'll zoom it out just a little bit. We did some gross, gross stuff down there, but again, it's not making a huge deal. Let's not make it a huge deal. And then over through here. Geometry, uh, deformation, geometry, deformation, mirror across the X, mirrored weld across the X. And then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and mark these as a different poly group here. And let's just do, you know, I'm gonna isolate. And let's just do this. Fine, crease tolerance here, dynamic. And then once I do the crease tolerance here, I have to go through and uncrease these. Sorry, crease edge here, alt, alt, alt. Just holding down Alt and uncreasing these edges here. And you know what? Maybe that should be increased too. Goodness gracious. Okay, I think we spent enough time on all that nonsense. Uh, although I think we're pretty close to being done. I don't th see anything else that needs to be like crazy. So you know what? We could, um, well, let's go ahead and save this. Go ahead and save this as. I'm going to throw this right into my streaming folder uh, for our Turtle Power Ebop. And we're going to call this Renaud. And uh, here's what I'm going to I'm just going to go through here. We're going to say, uh, I could keep these all separate and be like, you know what? I'm going to take an entire folder. I'm going to put all these things into a folder here and then copy the folder using Z plugin. Subtool master uh, copy folder paste folder, uh, but I think what I'm going to do instead is literally just do a merge visible, and that's going to throw out a merged version of this. I'm going to go to the side here, say B, create insert mesh new, go back to my guy, um, let's bring in his reference. So texture import. <laughs> um. What am I looking for here? Sorry, streaming is what we're doing. Reference. Um, where's this basic reference? Yes, perfect. Texture, add that to our spotlight. Make it a little bit bigger. Turn down the opacity a bit. And then I'm go ahead and make sure everything's vaguely lined up. We can even turn on perspective if we wanted to. So there's our guy. And again, we'll just go ahead and turn it way back in the beginning when we were messing around with the timeline show. I'm just going to go ahead and throw another timeline in there and drag that dot off, drag another dot back on. And then um, that's a good one. I'll just take his little turtle necklace here and we're going to say BI brush insert mesh this one and just drag. And we're going to say split mass points. We can turn X symmetry off if we don't need it and get rid of that one. Geometry modified topology delete hidden. And so now we have one. Kind of generally on his shirt-ish. And then uh, another one here. So let's say, control drag this out and give him a little room to breathe here. Close enough. And uh, you know, we can make that make more sense in a bit. But yeah, let's see what else we're missing on this guy. We've got his shoulders. You know what? We can play around with that. Are these cleaned up at all? Oh, you know what? Those are already kind of pretty clean. These are already pretty clean. Gosh, we're getting towards the end of this guy, I think. Um, we can do his hair, maybe. His teeth are looking pretty ratty. We can do a little bit better job on his teeth there. Or we could go through and we could texture this thing. Eh, you know, we'll not, we'll, we won't texture that. Cool. Alrighty. So uh, as far as things that need to be cleaned up, um, you know, like I said before, these are all looking decent. 
Um, those are all nano meshes, by the way. If you miss these streams, actually, um, if you go back to my YouTube channel here, we always have this. Let me see, YouTube playlist looks for the big blue genie live stream full episodes. So last month here, oh, I guess we did Crane last month actually, but here's all the previous. And then also where you're watching this now is the ZBrush Pavlovich workshop. So here's all my past episodes of my Pavlovich workshop here on their channel as well. So now uh, for the teeth, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna bring in the reference here, sorry. Add local image reference. I'm gonna bring in hue and see their simple one best one. There we go. So I'm gonna have these uh, available to me. So one obvious thing he's missing is uh, again I'm gonna grab this uh, necklace subtool here. Actually, this needs to be simplified as well. That's just a dynamesh. We could fix that real quick. Uh, but first, uh, let's sort of go out of perspective mode. Bi brush insert. Uh, IMM primitives, there may be, I guess there's not. Well, make a primitive out of a ring. So you can go through here and literally just put in a ring here. Let's say split mass points, W, we'll put this in here. And just like we've been doing before, I go through here and you can use deformation deflate, or I always like to go through here for some reason, QMesh poly group all, and just hold down shift, and just pull along that surface normal, thin that out. Uniformly scale this down. So, a little bit more. D for dynamic if we want. Uh, increase level of, I mean, increase level doesn't even matter on this one, but smooth subdiv of two is fine. And then, um, you know what, let's play around with this hair. So, he has a very, very, uh, he's got a very particular kind of mohawk that kind of goes up to a little ponytail there. It's the best way to do that. Hmm. We may have to do two separate two separate sections here. So for this hair, um, and a guy you also don't do, we want to stylize or we want to do uh, fiber mesh. We'll start with fiber mesh. If that doesn't quite work, we'll do a little bit more stylized. Um, so one way I can grow this fiber mesh out, thank you. Got even more cold brew. I'm going to be buzzing today. Um, so, uh, homemade cold brew, cold brew, by the way, got a little weird contraption. You can put the grinds in there and throw it in the fridge. Um, we can grow fiber mesh out using a morph target, or we can literally just mask and grow fiber mesh. Um, I think we'll try a morph target first. Uh, congrats on your 100,000 subscriber milestone. Did I hit that? Let me back out. Yes, I do. Look at that. Ta-da. Thanks, everybody. You know what? Um, thank you. It's all it's all you viewers that do that, make that number. So if it wasn't for y'all, then I would just be screaming into the void. I'm doing good. Places 3D. <laughs> Cool. Um, oh, strap on the leg and scruff fur on the cheeks, maybe. Yeah, you know what? That's a good point. He does have a strap on his leg, and we would maybe need to even put in uh, some cloth wrinkles on here. In fact, this this whole pants situation, I'm not a real big fan of. We have wrinkles on there, but this whole top part is really, it kind of bothers me a little bit, so we may have to rethink that just a bit. And he also has knee pads that we also need to make. Um, but you know what? Well, okay, first thing. I did say we we're gonna fix this real quick. So this would be an easy fix. Uh, we have a Dynamesh thing sitting here and this is 236,000 polygons. It doesn't need to be that heavy. Um, so let's go ahead and fix this real quick. So first thing I like to do is hold down control and tap this little point in history. Uh, so we can always snap back to these verts. We're storing these vert positions in history. Uh, now we're gonna go through here and just do a quick uh, Ziri mesher. So of course that's gonna be under your geometry Ziri mesher here. And I'm gonna say, Zeri mesher, adaptive size down. Again, the lower this is, the more 
perfect quads it's going to want to make. I don't need to go all the way down, but maybe around 10 uh, key groups. I don't need to have that on. And then we're going to zero mesh this, uh, not half, but maybe target polygon count of 2000 is probably fine. So what that's going to do is give me new geometry. Uh, it's going to kind of maybe average some vertices. So you're going to see it kind of maybe has a little bit of a melting effect, but we can always snap back uh, to our other verts. So here's our new uh, vert positions. And I think, honestly, this is actually pretty damn good. Uh, if you wanted to push it a little bit, um, you see I have a project history in here. I'm going to do project history. That's going to move these verts back out to that stored point in history we have. Of course, that's underneath subtool project here. Uh, all this is on the YouTube channel as well. If you just go to my YouTube channel, then you want to do like, what the hell is that? History project or history recall. Uh, it's all through here. And that's actually ZBrush. You're going to see ZBrush 2020. So if, it, if you ever see that, um, if I'm smart, usually what I'll do is I'll put a little YouTube link to the um, to the video, or at least the video series. But you can also go in here in your playlist and just do a quick search for um, ZBrush 2020. What's new? There's 2019. Here's a ZBrush 2020. What's new? View full playlist, and then if you just do a Control F history, you can go through here and you can just cycle through. Here's their history recall brush, project history, all that good stuff. So I'll link you here with all the 2020 functionality we're messing with. Anyways, uh, if you want to play with this or just keep pushing it, let's go half, zero measure half. Again, we try to go as low as we can. And again, it's kind of averaging those verts. So we'll go back to project history. We'll snap those back out. Half, project history, snap them back out. I think that's pretty low. So what we're going to do is we need to get the details back, right? And the details are being stored in those vert positions in our history. Um, now you don't have to do this. You could go through here and do a project all and duplicate this off, but I like project history. So control D, which is geometry subdivide. And then again, project history, control D, project history, control D, project history. Um, it kind of put a weird line along here. You're gonna see this gets a little bit nasty alias. So if you wanted to go through here and put like zero measure lines on here or guides, you could, for me personally, oops, not project all. Sorry, project history is what you want to do there. Uh, project all is going to grab a bunch of weirdo stuff that's just sitting next to them. Project history, there we go. So now the cool thing about this is you now have subdivision history. You can, you can UV this later. You can bake out a normal map or whatever, uh, but you still have your high-res details back. So that's how I would fix that. Cool. Yes. Uh, if you're able to unwrap this, is there any way to get the seams where you want them? Unwrap seems a bit unpredictable. It's not, if you want to put the seams exactly where you want to, and again, we'll just do a quick save here. So again, if I wanted to UV this in any particular way, first thing I would do is the plugin. We're gonna go through here and we're gonna say UV master, symmetry, yes. Work on clone, yes. So here's our object here. And then we have X symmetry turned on still. There we go. Uh, so now I can go through here again. I'm going to use my uh, underneath your poly groups. You have your group by normals. So you can use this. Let's drop that max angle down. You know what? Let's do open circle. Um, so this will actually give you poly groups here. So let's crank that max angle up. Open circle, poly groups. You can go through here and this will split your object up into poly groups. So now you can go through here and you say, you know what? This poly group here. Oops. Why is it grabbing all that? This purple poly group here. And then maybe this orange and this green poly group here can all be one poly group. And then um, I don't want to do a mirror and well because that's going to change my word order, which I think may kind of do some nasty stuff here. So I'm going to kind of try to keep those in the same poly group here. Control W. So basically, I'm breaking up my um, object into different poly groups. And this is going to determine exactly where my seam lines are. So I've got this one here. Does this work? Yeah, that can all be one, right? And then same thing out here. So all this one, this can all be one. Control W. Now you can also uh, go through here and literally just paint your polygroups if you want to. Um, but I think that'll work fine. That's all going to be one polygroup here. So something like this, you could go through and just split these things up to the exact polygroups you want. And then fingers crossed, you should be able to go through here, symmetry, polygroups, uh, unwrap. And then when you flatten, 
uh, it'll flatten them along those polygroup lines. Now you can, if we do unflatten, you can go here and say uh, enable control painting and that's where you can go through here and be like, okay, I'm gonna paint this red and paint this blue. It's going to get rid of, it's gonna basically try and put your seams where you want them, but on a shape this complex that has like a bunch of ins and outs and connected pieces, I think it's a little bit safer to go through and uh, do it this way. Uh, in fact, you know, speaking of polygroup painting, which again, what you can do is if you want to change some of these and be like, you know what, this one, I want this one to be green, this one to be pink. Again, you can go into your Z roller brush, hold down Alt, start painting, and then tap Shift to inherit that. And then uh, you can go through here and you can say again, hold down Alt to start painting, Shift to inherit pink, and then you can just paint these pink. So you can go through and you know, fine tune where you want your exact polygroups to go. Uh, but yeah, that seemed to work fine. Anyways, yeah, so if we go through here again, unwrap, uh, flatten to check your seams. Okay, that'll work for me. Um, so we'll say unflatten. We'll go ahead and copy these UVs. We'll go back to our actual mesh here, and we'll say paste UVs just to make sure we can go down here and we can say uh, texture map, create new from UV map or UV check, and you'll see there we go. We have UVs. Now, in this instance, I don't necessarily need UVs. Like UVs will actually kind of drastically increase your file sizes and uh, kind of hit your performance a little bit. So if you don't need them, then don't worry about them. Just go in here to your UV map and say delete UV, etc. Yeah, and zero metric guys. I tend to use um, poly, poly groups just to get the exact line that I want. Alex, F1, I'm doing good. Um, I you know what I don't yeah I'll use Z I'll use ZBrush a little bit uh, for UV unwrapping for quick stuff. Cool, thank you, Carlos. Carlos Santana, wow, you have uh, rock and roll royalty here. Excellent from Brazil. Um, got people all over the place today. Yeah, let's go ahead and do. Okay, let's do this. Hmm. Let's try some fiber mesh. I don't know how good it's going to do, but we'll give it a shot. So for fiber mesh, what I'm going to do is I don't necessarily want to mess around with this base mesh here. So I'm going to duplicate this off and we're going to say go into solo mode and we're going to say control. Uh, you know what? Let's go back to our, you see we have that little red thing. Let's go ahead and control tap that point in history for our thing so it's not stored in history anymore. Uh, and then go back to his head here. This is our duplicate. So I'm going to hold down control. You know, let's turn on transparency here. And I'm just going to use this as a guide of where we want our. You can hold down control. And if you want to mask through, let's turn on ghost. So we can go through here and be like, okay, so our mohawk is going to essentially be here. And it's going to kind of transition into a ponytail from there. So let's go out of solo mode here. Just control tap to kind of blur those edges out a little bit. And we'll use this as our fiber mesh guide. Uh, like I was mentioning before, what we can do is we can go through here and we can say morph target and just make sure that's deleted. We're going to store a morph target and then control tap to invert this, hit W. And we'll just kind of use this as our way to grow our fiber mesh. Cool. And you know what, let's go out of X-Symmetry, snap to the middle, and we'll kind of spread that out. So this is where I want my fiber mesh to grow, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back here to our fiber mesh, and we're gonna go through here, and we're gonna say preview, and we're gonna go down here under modif, nope, under, I think it is under modifiers at the very bottom here, morph target guided. If you turn that on, it's going to put all of those uh, fibers right where more uh, more target is. However, let's go ahead and turn off preview. Let's go ahead and say switch, so we don't see it sitting there. And then back here under preview, we'll have more target guided. So now you can see, you know where your fibers are. And uh, you know what? Just for the hell of it, let's go ahead and make this what it should be. So we we'll go ahead and turn his base to purple, and his tip to purple as well. And 
let's change our material here. So that's essentially what this is looking like. Let's take gravity and we'll turn that down so it's just kind of going straight out. And then our max fibers, we're going to crank those down quite a bit. And then the coverage we're going to crank up to so kind of thicken these out. There we go. So we have a mohawk started. Now again, this mohawk is going to transition uh, into a ponytail here, and that's where it gets a little bit tricky. We can we can comb that down. That's good enough. So I'll say accept. Uh, yeah, sure. So I went ahead and turned on uh, the preview setting. So if you go down here to preview settings, we have fast preview turned on. So that'll kind of lessen this. In fact, we can turn the previs down. So you see less control splines essentially. So while you're combing this, uh, you're not going to see very many. Your performance will be enhanced um, for what that's worth. So this hair, uh, again, this is just a, a guide for where we want our stuff to go. So if I go back here to our hair, now we need to figure out how we want this. So let's go ahead and turn on X-symmetry here. And now we want fiber mesh to be grown out. Now, we don't want to do fiber mesh like this because, you know, you're not growing your hair down here to make a ponytail. You're growing your hair here with longer hair, and that gets pulled into a ponytail. So I think this is the only place you'd really need hair growing out of. And we'll do a little bit of a different technique here. So we'll turn on preview. Um, and we'll turn off Morph Target Guided. We're going to crank up our length quite a bit, maybe even all the way. And on this one here, I should have done this on the other one, the segments we're going to really crank up, maybe to like 9, 10, or 11. Uh, gravity, we're going to turn up a little bit so it kind of hangs. And then twist, we'll just put twist down to zero. We can do that manually. Um, there we go. So now we've got kind of a ponytail growing out. So we've got the the mohawk here and then uh, the ponytail. We're going to comb this into place and kind of bunch it up and see if we can't get this to work. Something like this. You know, in the base here, I wish I could see that one. What we could do. I'm going to take this color, I'm going to grab the tip color, and then for the base. There we go. Okay. All right. And then, uh, yeah, so now this is where you can kind of kind of play with the coverage or the max fibers, you know, depending on how many fibers you want to see. And in this case, and we want more segments because we want to have a little bit more control uh, as we're grooming this to have more, you know, basically a segment is down the length of the fiber, uh, more divisions. So we can get a little bit more because if you just have three, it's going to go one, two, three. It's going to be very boxy looking. Um, in fact, you know what, let's crank this up a little bit. It's like 12. Turn gravity down just a bit. Okay, good enough. Let's see what this will work. So we're going to go ahead and say uh, accept. So now we have our fiber mesh here. And let's do this brush, groom. I kind of want to bring it all into place here. We'll try this. I'm going to do groom hair ball. And we're just going to kind of wrap this up into a kind of a single little ball here. Now, another thing we need to do is way down here underneath brush, auto masking. I think it's in here. It's been a while since I've done this. Um, oh no, it's not. It's under brush, fiber mesh here. This front collision tolerance, I'm going to drop this down to like 10 and that'll allow us to kind of get a little bit closer as we're grooming, get us a little bit closer to the um, underlying mesh so it doesn't kind of puff out as we're doing this here. So we've got kind of a thing going here. And again, that's going to be, I think that's global. Oh, maybe not. Uh, let's see. Brush, groom, hair toss. Again, it's been a while since I've done this. Okay. So if we go in here to our move brush here, I'm going to say preserve length up to 100 and then the front collision tolerance is set to 10. So now we can use our move brush as a, a groom brush, essentially. That'll be a little bit easier to use, maybe. So here's our ponytail. That's going to go through here. And then, um, oops. Uh, if, you know what? Let's simplify our scene a little bit. I want our fiber mesh here, and I want our hair guide here. Now, if I'm using this, okay, good. So now I won't be trying to collide with, like, uh, clothing and stuff like that. 
good enough and you know what that's also i'm just gonna keep pushing my i'm gonna keep popping my hair up here a little bit and then pulling it back out um you can also use shift to kind of go through and smooth hair if you wanted to um and then again move we're using this as our groom brush and even pinch we'll go in here to our pinch again preserve length up to 100 and then uh, front collision tolerance at 10. we can go ahead and start pinching smooth and then pinch and then go back in our groom brushes here groom uh, let's see brush groom hair toss then i kind of feather them back out a little bit i kind of get a ponytail going and this gets a little bit tedious so you can kind of go through here again with your move brush i'm going to take this preserve length down a little bit so i can use my move brush to kind of lengthen these strands a little bit and then we'll go if you go back up to 100 that's kind of like cloth dynamics where it kind of maintains uh, the relationships between your hair Go. and then uh, I can actually just maybe mask these ends here and let's see if there's a brush groom spike let's drop that Z intensity way down let's kind of twist these together just a bit and it keeps wanting to like collide with other stuff oh you know what maybe because I have this on Turn that off. This is a way to say like, I wish it was a little bit more like dynamic so I could tell it, hey, don't worry about trying to be fiber mesh around these particular things. Anyway, you can kind of go through here and try to, again, mask by poly groups. Oops, not mass by poly groups. Uh, preserve length down. Again, so we want to pull these top ones in here. Um, we don't really have symmetry turned on. We're going to kind of just get this into place here. And then you could even go through and you could use inflate. Oh, you know, one thing I did forget to do. Uh, so, one thing you're going to maybe want to do is underneath here, you're going to see BPR settings. We have um, the sides is set to four. Uh, however, uh, with the profile is set to one, so literally you're not going to see thickness on your hair unless you do a BPR render, which turns the sides uh, to four. So if you wanted real geometry, which generally I do, uh, I would do the preview setting or the profile set to four, and then the segments, you dial that in uh, however you need. So anyway, something like that. It, it, but again, it's I don't think it's great for a live stream. It's a little bit tedious to mess with. Uh, that's the other thing too, is now I can't use like, I could use inflate um, if it was real geometry. Now it's kind of inflating, like I would inflate a plane, which isn't super useful. Um, but you know, there's groom turbulence and stuff like that. So you could go through there and you could start dialing in. Let's see, um, sorry, preserve length back to 100. have to go back here again this is a fast preview so you're going to see there's going to be more hairs that are going to populate during a render uh, like so so now you would have to go through here and you know maybe use a brush groom hair toss maybe and now this one had fewer segments you know so it's going to be it's only got three so I don't know, this is a good practice run to be like, okay, um, what's working, what's not. And then I would go back through and be like, okay, let's do another version of this where we put in our profiles. So we have uh, actual geometry and you could even go through here and clump. So if you wanted to say, you know, what, let's hold down control mask pin, go ahead and mask you know, these entire strands here, control tap to invert this, go back into your pinch. Um, there is a brush groom clump, brush groom, Somewhere in here, there's a groom clump here, um, but you could also just manually do it too, to get that look you want. Let's turn off dynamic for a solo. So something like that, uh, you could start to get a little bit of hair going.
Um, sculpt ZBrush export to model Maya. Can I do UVs in Maya? Or I need to do it in ZBrush before I export to Maya. Uh, you can do UVs in Maya if you wanted to. Uh, like Alex is saying. Cool. <laughs> I was in a video for a graphics card. Excellent. Uh, that's interesting. <laughs> I wonder what that's all about. I don't remember uh, doing any graphics card videos. Uh, good idea to update my ZBrush. Um, asking if they've had issues in the past with some updates on pin pressure. Uh, they do have underneath preferences here, tablet, tablet driver API. Uh, you can give these a shot if you're having kind of weird issues. You could go through here and um, play around with those. The, the, the second, the last two are more of a, um, I always have to update because I always have to stay latest and greatest with ZBrush, new functionality videos I have to make. Um, but yeah, I haven't had any problems. Oh, here's my here's my reference guy. I guess we don't need him. And then uh, also the reference arm. Cool, let's go ahead and hold down shift and turn off polyframe here. And uh, this hair, you know what? I'll, I'll leave this hair in here since I may end up redoing that fiber mesh there. Um, we'll call that a day. Oh, good. We're wrapping up. We're wrapping up quick. Um, you know what? One more, one last thing here. We'll go ahead and say alt tap these here if we want these to look a little bit better. Uh, we'll turn on dynamic. Uh, smooth subdiv of two is fine. Let's say crease level of two, smooth subdiv of three. Um, we may have to go through here and add some control loops in here, or you know what? You know, this isn't all meant to have one smoothing type, uh, but I guess it'll work okay. The only thing I see that kind of bugs me, let's do this real quick. Hold on, control shift, control shift A, and then I'll grab these pins. Let's hit control W, and then now we can say mask invert. And I'm just going to go through here again one more time. Deformation. Um, deformation what? Inflate. And we'll go ahead and, um, again, let's undo that. If you tap inflate, maybe, is there a little? No, there's not really. I guess inflate of one is fine. Good enough. All righty. Uh, and again, if you wanted to thicken these up a little bit, you could, I would, I would do it in the base model, uh, frankly. Uh, but since we do have polygroups here, we can say Q mesh polygroup all, and then just hold down shift as you're pulling along that surface normal. And now they're kind of thicken up where those polygroups are. A little bit better. Um, yeah. Uh, put an alpha on a groom brush, does it affect anything? Yeah, I think it will. I think, in fact, I think some of those groom brushes brush groom. I wanna say some of those groom brushes do have an alpha in there. Yeah, so here's the groom brush. You can see that's got an alpha in there. It kind of layers, gives you a layer effect. Cool, all right, everybody. I'm gonna head out. Um, we'll pick this back up next week. Oh, not next week, this week, Thursday. I'll stream on my channel and uh, we'll we'll just continue, keep the continuing on. Uh, like I said before, we got some claw stuff we could do. Um, or, you know, we can do something completely different. It doesn't have to be uh, continue to be this guy, but um, he's just kind of a fun one to play with, different techniques and stuff. So, cool. Thanks, everybody. And I'll uh, catch you on the flip side.